Greetings and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, we will now be moving on to the third and final game of the trilogy. Hence the name. Trials and Tribulations. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. Hmm. I know absolutely nothing of this. <laughs> play Turnabout Memories? Well, I can't really play any other episode, but whatever. Thanks for the non-existent choice. Ugh. Ugh. Ah! How did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? That girl? You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your own sake, if you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something that you need to know about that girl. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Nice pink shirt. It wasn't me. I didn't... I didn't do it. Five years earlier. Mia Fey's second trial. April 11, 9.40 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Phew, it's finally time. I'm kinda nervous. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grossberg. April Fools. Yeah. It's ten days after the first, you idiot. Oh, good morning. Ah, Mia, calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I am relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me. I'm relaxed. Brr, I mean, it seems so you're uh, so relaxed that you're yelling. Brr. Shut up. Brr. Let go of my lapes. The pals. What's a lapes? Oh, never mind. You obviously haven't got the temper tantrum to be a lawyer. Uh, what? I'm sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Bro, that's right. This is your first time in the big ladies, isn't it? We're just weird because it's your second trial. So, I don't understand how you go from not big leagues to big leagues all of a sudden in two trials. Bruh. Well, where you fear, my dear? By Marvin Grossberg, where at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What with your earnest request last night? That he handled his case, he suddenly said, but quite forcefully, too. It kind of hurt my feelings. Why would you force things? <laughs> ah. Shut up, fat man. What? I just found out yesterday about the case I'm. What? Ready for to learn all the relevant facts? No, I'm just gonna wing it. But that's not good. How about that? You see, I mean, of course I have. I think. Well, oh dear. Very any case. Don't let your clients see you're so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. Uh, let's see. Let's already look at the report. We got Doug's autopsy report, date and time of death, 4 slash 9 at 3 p.m. Cause of death was fatal electric shock. Profile, Marvin, superior, and head of Grossberg Law Office. Client, 13, well, wow, 13, I'm an idiot. I was going to say 13 year student, like, wow, he, the frick is he trying to become, an astronaut? Third year art student at Ivy University, he currently has a cold. I mean, in 
this day and age, it could just be that he doesn't want to catch uh, the bad stuff. We'll just call it that. He doesn't want to catch the permanent disease. The down and out. What are you talking about? Never mind. Uh, who's this guy? Duck Swallow, age 22, victim. It was a fourth year. From ecology, student at Ivy University. Dolly, see, Hawthorne, age 20, Phoenix Wright's girlfriend. Oh, I have a girlfriend. Weird. All this time I thought it would be Mia. It was just some random redhead. Dated the victim, Doug Swallow, up until eight months ago. Weird. Okay. Sounds like garbage. <laughs> Good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I uh, just want to say I'll give it all I've got. Okay. You do realize you're the one that's supposed to sit down and shut up and I'm the lawyer who has to talk about all this stuff, right? Really? You're the liar? Now it's lawyer, you idiot. Why would you mess that up? I don't know. Yep, probably, uh, no problem. <laughs> it's here. Oh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something? Mr. Rye? Well, I mean, Grossberg did just say that. Actually, I think you're the one that said that. So, well, no. We just learned that from his profile that he has a cold. But, I mean, he has a mask over his face. And this is Japan. I mean, I mean America. Japan, America. Or Amerijap. That he basically has no choice but to wear the mask. And wearing the mask means that he is, in fact, sick. So, I don't see why you're asking. You should just know by him wearing the mask. Actually, it's Shiro. Like, the... You know, wait. Like a superhero? What? It's right. Like the Flying Brothers. What? I thought you said your name was Shiro. Hmm. People screw it up all the time. Don't avoid the question. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. The way you sneeze, you probably need a trash bag over your head. Oh, whatever. My doc says, this way, I won't give it to anyone else. No, that's just the law. The law says that you wear it so that way you don't infect anyone else. But whatever, Phoenix. Be kind to others, he says. Ah, right, Mr. Shiro. You have nothing to fear in court today. Ah, excuse me, I burped. Why? Yeah, if you are truly innocent, I promise I will save you. Uh, please let go of my shirt. <laughs> That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Fay. I'm still pretty new at this liar thing. I mean, lawyer. Frick. Uh, now he's got me saying it. What an idiot. First time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win. Oh, so she actually lost her first trial. Interesting. For my client, and for myself. I wonder what would happen if she lost every trial. Like, how how badly would she, uh, go down in history? If at all. Like, would she just end up having to do a different profession? Or whatever. April 11th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. April 11th. April Fools! I don't want a soda today. It's ten days out, Santa. Bro! Frick! Get me a soda! And we don't have any right now. I should ban you all from court today now. 
Or is in session for the trial of Zag Cheryl. The defense is ready, Santa. Why are you calling me Santa? Uh... You just look like Santa Claus, so... That... Doesn't make any sense. Whatever. The prosecution is ready, Santa. Ugh. Who's this frickin' idiot? Whatever. We're gonna... Defend. I had a joke and then I lost it. Family should just get on with it, Santa. Yeah, you should probably just get on with it. And the best today is Miss Miss May I fight what is it? Yes, Santa. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was going to be leading the defense. Yes, well you see. Mr. Grossberg had a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing right next to you? <laughs> oh, wow, she is a great liar. <laughs> yes, well, uh... You... You're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest luck. Set the death. Of course, Santa. Three dots, I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne. Your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. <laughs> I'm just gonna slap my hair because I can. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense liar. It's lawyer. Yeah, whatever. Two dollars exclamation point. Don't worry, little girl. It will all be over soon. What's that all about? Is he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. I mean, you could just say victim. I don't know why you would have to say murder victim. Who knows if he was actually murdered, but, you know, they're trying to be brutal, I guess that's the point. But still, that's really unnecessary. Ugh. Now that I realize what joke I wanted to call him, he's trying to be the Fonz. Man. What a douche. Both of them, actually. Both the Fonz and him are the douche. Anyways. He was a fourth year student studying, uh, pharmacology. Mm, pharmacology? Is that the study of testing firmness? Like how firm leather can be, and how firm a pillow is. Now, Santa, no, that it has to. It's pharmaceuticals, you idiot. No. Oh. Okay, Lottie Daw, then, Mister Smarty Pants. Hmm. Sounds like he was a very bright young man. He was not. <laughs> he was getting D minuses. What? Never mind. Yes. Well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Does this make everyone laugh? What kind of joke is that? That was terrible! Never mind. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. And the defendant, who had obviously bludgeoned his getaway. Yeah. They then called the police. What do you mean by bludgeoned? Don't you mean bungled? Yeah, whatever. He basically messed up, Santa. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence, and will not be laughing about it. Okay. Last time I tried to do a joke. Crime photo one. Crime took place behind an IVU building. Sounds really weird. IVU? Yeah, whatever. Add to the record. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. I mean, it's just a photo, Santa. You're not supposed to figure out the cause of death from it. It's also not the photo's job. That's the coroner's job. <laughs> Who's a coroner? What? Wait, wait, have we never talked about the coroner in this entire game? In this entire series? No, I don't think we have, actually. 
Well, that's super weird. Your reputation for a, uh... Saga City? What? Saga City is well-earned, Santa. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? An unusual death! An unusual death? Can you two stop repeating yourselves? It's pissing me off. Especially since I don't have soda. What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? Not that question. What? A simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. That sounds really gross. Don't ever say that. Ew. Ew. C Santa, can I slap him? Absolutely. Slap. Ah! Okay. Well, I see how it is. Now it's just gonna gang up on me today. Great. I am a gentle man, if you know. Okay. I was taking that out of context as a joke. Now he's taking it out of context because the writers wrote him to take it out of context. That's messed up. We need to get rid of this dude. ASAP. Uh, what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Show him that you're made of woman. You do that, Mia. What? Do I have a voice in my head? Uh, no. Bruh! The perfect opportunity! Well, what is it? The cost. Go on. Uh, well, it was a fatal electric shock. But by the looks of it, when it comes to that photo, it's clearly obvious to see how that happened. There's clearly a faulty wire, and it's uh, not grounded properly. It's also active, and that's uh, not good if it's just going to be dangling active around a bunch of students. Hmm. Someone really should have thought better on placing those wires in a more safe and secure location. Anyways. Bruh, free dogs. Please say you go at least this once. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Ugh. My hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Well, let's see. The details of the case are filed under the court record. But you do not already did. Ah, the court record. I think I can see that by pressing the R1 button. What's that about an R1 button? Uh, nothing. Well, the weapons we need can be filed in the court record. Take a good, hard look at the data there. But think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. And now let's completely ignore him now. Got to stay calm. Can't let that press here get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. Just press the I1 button here. That one. It's not doing anything. Oh well. No. The game is faulty. Now then! Wait, we're in a game! Shut up, Santa. You didn't hear anything. Yeah, you didn't hear anything. What? Where's that voice coming from? Sounds like Shira. But he's sitting over there being quiet and stupid. Hey! Would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? Electrocution. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock in other words, electrocution. Electrocution! But how could such a thing happen? By not having a properly grounded hot wire? No. That's kinda messed up. I mean, you can also use a car battery. What? Never mind. Did the murderer use some type of new, super powerful stun gun, perhaps? I mean, yeah. Well, probably not super powerful, but... Under the worst circumstances, yeah, a stun gun could do that. Or maybe if you just let the stun gun linger for too long, it's still technically a lethal weapon. It just, in the right usage, will incapacitate someone without, uh, without lethal force. I.e. it's non-lethal. But it can still be lethal, which is the ironic part of it. Stun guns suck. 
Anyways. The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Santa. But before that, there is one more vital issue. Your frickin' duckbill Hellcat! I mean... Okay, there's another issue. What's that? Why, <laughs> motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? Is there such thing as good blood? Is there neutral blood? Is there medium blood? Is it medium rare? No, Santa, shut up. It's not food. What? What do you mean? Oopsie! I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I don't like this guy's smug attitude. Max Winston prayed for you. He is what's move operator. Hmm. Sure he is. If you check my drift. I don't see it. He has a green suit. Green is the color of evil. I should know. Many of the characters I wrote in my books have green on them. They're all evil. Book is in the link in the description below. We don't call him Rookie Count for nothing, you know. Ah, Devil Bang! That sounds disgusting! What? 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 Bruh, never mind. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Uh, evidence? Bruh, no need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all the weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then throw it into old Greybeard's face. I heard that. I will put coal in your stocking. I mean, uh, I'll have you thrown out of court. Why would I want to put coal in your stocking? Y y yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Bah, Mr. Welfare. That's very insulting. Bah, why are you doing that? Try to settle a better example for the young lady. Go. See you after court later. Bet on it. Bravo. Well, yeah, Revenance isn't the only thing in court record. People's profiles are as well. You can toggle between profiles and evidence with the R1 button, so be sure to go over it. I'm proud of that. Now then, let's see what you've got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Zeg Shiro and the victim? The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Zeg Shiro. Uh, I kind of don't like that, actually. I don't like the way that sounds. I don't want to date a human. I mean, what? But up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. That sounds weird. I'm sure there's plenty of people who will take that out of context, and I don't mind that. But anyways, clearly she has some part to play in this story. Got a girlfriend. Human girlfriend going out with furry. That is disgusting! Bruh, they done it again. He weirded out the... Santa Claus. What? What? Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge sticky pit. He wants. Devil bang! I am thinking like he wants. What? 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 Very well, Mr. Payton. Please call your friend with us. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Zay Shiro. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye? It's fine. After all, Mr. Shiro is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Zay Shiro to the witness stand. And no more of your furry nonsense, you stupid. 
Oh. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Ah, oh, oh uh, yes, my name is Zeg Shiro. I am a YouTuber. And also a, uh, science fiction fantasy writer. And also a, semi-pro-ish gamer. What? My job is, uh, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. But I'm also a writer. With a book in the link in the description below. Huh? Oh no, he means what did you do before you were arrested? Oh, uh, huh. yeah. I was a university student. Was. Technically, it should still be is, but... You know, Phoenix is an idiot. Mr. Shiro, you understand that you are suspected in the death of your... But I, I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you, I was... Uh, <coughs> yeah, Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his code to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Mm. Well then, Mr. Shiro. Please, thoughts about your relation to the victim. Right away, Santa. Why does that sound... ...comforting? And... ...almost familiar? I have no idea. I feel like everyone's just being stupid at the moment. This won't come back to bite me in a couple of years later. I, uh, I admit I was there. But I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Oh, British, is he? That sounds very racist of you. Shut up, Santa. You're like a... You're from a German novel anyways. What? Never mind. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. Yeah. Looks like the judge understands. Well, I don't think he does. You're being naive, you know. True naive. Huh? <laughs> Seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be... This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Why would he remind the defense that they can do that? I would think that if the prosecution wants to win, that they wouldn't remind the defense on how to do their job. That's totally on the defense and the judge themselves to remind the attorneys what they need to be doing. So, if the defense isn't going to cross-examine, or if they forgot that they need to cross-examine, I would think that the, uh, the prosecution would just keep their mouth shut and wait. It's a free win at that point. Whatever. Cross-examination. Take right. That is defense duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? Contradictions. Contradictions? Stop repeating what I said. If a witness is lying, my statement will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Shiro is my client. We would have seen his reply. In court, while life must be struck down. That's a lawyer. That is your duty, see. Don't you mean lawyer? No. Frank. Right. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a lie? A contradiction? Double bang! Now then, your lie, I mean a cross examination, if you please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Shiro, tell me you haven't been lying. I've been lying. Frick! You wouldn't do that to me, would you? I absolutely would. I'm gonna slap you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, I was there. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's, I think, where the problem is, though. I'm gonna talk to that stuck up British wannabe. Um. Let's see. Fourth year. I feel like I have to. 
represent Dahlia's profile for that. Let's see. All I did was find the body. We'll, we'll just press everything just to see. You say you found the body. So who called the police? Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. Unfortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students? Other students? Other students! That's correct. They were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. Remember, but standing next to the body. What is this room, Mr. Cheryl? <laughs> Can you stop seeing every time you're in a bind? Well, I mean, his blood's boiling. Nerves are getting racked. Of course, he's gonna start sneezing and coughing suddenly out of nowhere. You know, both mentally and physically, you can't take it. Well, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body, but, but I. So, you didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right! Uh, well, no. That is, I mean... So, which is it? Did you know him or not? <laughs> now, see here! You can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day! Uh, um, well... Guess I did know his name. News to me! Why didn't he tell me that before? Uh, I heard he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? Ah, yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Ah, young love. So bittersweet. Eh. I think it's just bitter, Santa. Disgusting. But that's all I knew about him. Mr. Shear, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him... Put my finger! Then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Hmm. Actually, you know, that makes sense. Because, uh... How would you know that he's a stuck-up or British or wannabe? You hadn't talked to him at least once. Uh, three dots. Three dots. Three dots? <laughs> well, Mr. Shiro? Uh, no, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Shiro, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yes, well, uh... He said he was born in Britain. That would actually make him a British person. That's not a wannabe at that point. Oh. Let's see, he was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Union Jack? Really? Did you see at uh, the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean. Yes, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. That's why... That's why I figured he must love British stuff, see? It's true. Cross my heart. I swear I didn't do it. Wow. Really, Phoenix? Shut up, voice in my head. Whoa. Wait, I have a voice in my head? <sighs> Whatever. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. Hmm. That, uh... That's disgusting, because the salmon that I ate last night was not good. What? Shut up, voice in my head. That's... No, that... We're not talking about you. Shut up. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Yes, Santa? Why is it you had salmon? Uh, because I wanted to? Good. What is it now? Who is the person, anyway? This Union Jack fellow. Ah, <sighs> Three dots. The Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. 
Oh, I see. So you mean, like, the stars and stripes, right? Yes, Santa. As usual, Santa, your insight astounds me. Wow, really? He's gonna praise him for that? <laughs> okay. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Mia, there's a contradiction here. Mr. Ghostbag? Crack it out. So that the boy you read misses. Whichever it's happening. Okay, Mia. Check the court record carefully. Well, over there. Do you think you can manage on your own from this point? I can handle myself. I can handle it myself. I need some help. Uh... Honestly, I kind of need some help. Uh, Mr. Crossbreak, I can use a little help. Well, please don't look so sad. But bring a tear to my eye when you do. Alright, listen carefully. By comparing the testimony to the court record, you should be able to discover any contradictions. There are any. Where would you find one? I present a piece of evidence that contradicts the witness's testimony. Yes, that's a ticket. But still, I don't see any contradiction in Mr. Shiro's testimony. Hmm. Well, I mean, he is a furry. There's gotta be one in there somewhere. What? Maybe you don't have enough information. Information? You can press for more information by leaning on a witness. I can lean on them? Not physically, no, Church. You know what I mean. Even if they're my own client? It doesn't matter who it is. If you think online, press them like a cheap suit. What? Where well, is the obligation of an attorney? Okay, Mia. One more time. From the very beginning of his testimony. Okay, so... He was there. All he did was find the body. Hardly knew the guy to begin with. Never talked to that British wannabe. Always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. But the Union Jack isn't in the photo. That's the problem. I think that's the contradiction, though. Yeah. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. That's right. Ah, is there some point to this line of questioning? Santa, please take another look at the crime scene photo. Well, it's not gonna make me laugh. If it didn't make me laugh the first time, it's not gonna make me laugh the second time. No, Santa, it's not what I'm trying to... As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute. He's wearing a leather jacket. The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. What? Whatever. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. Uh. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? Put my finger. You have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. It's at the desk. Mr. Shiro, you've been lying to me. Three dots. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> cry, baby. Bra, 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 bra. Bra, bigger. Bigger client cry. I mean, he kind of deserved it. You, like you said, he's a furry. But that's kind of harsh. Maybe not to my shirt. But okay. Let him. That pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyway. Wow. That is a dirty joke, but a joke nonetheless that I will absolutely shame you for, Mia. Really? <laughs> Especially since it's a pink shirt? Wow. Girl, you have issues. I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Shiro was all wrong. <laughs> That was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Three dots exclamation point. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Ugh. Uh-oh. Did I go too far? Yes, yes you did. Shut up, fat man. By 
By the way, Mr. Shiro, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? No. I, um, yeah, I took some, but... What's the medicine that you took? An over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? That kind of sounds like a band, actually. It does? Weird. Also, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have worked anyways. I used Dayquil and NyQuil, which are trademark copyrighted, not sponsored. What? The heck are those? Yeah, that's right. Kills cold's good. <laughs> doesn't now. It doesn't seem to be working for you. Uh, I mean, it's not supposed to be instant, but okay. Hey, wait a second. How do you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Why do you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. You lost it? Does this even have anything to do with this case? Mr. Shiro, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Santa, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the crime scene. This one is sure to make you laugh. Uh, not really. It's just a hand. It's kind of... disgusting, actually. I would prefer a paw. What? Never mind. Uh, what is this? The victim's paw. It's... It's Cold Killer X. Uh, objection. Uh, yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. Objection. Yeah, objection! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Shiro's fingerprints are all over it. What? Fingerprints. Sensing this murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine. Dropped by Mr. Shiro and hid it in his paws. His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Saint Shiro. Order! Order in the court! Stop talking about paws! You're all just a bunch of idiots! I mean, first. Wait, I don't think that makes it any better. Actually, don't answer that! Santa, I don't think you really should be freaking out about that, but okay. And I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Crime scene photo 2. Victim's watch stopped at the time of death. Oh, did it now? That's an interesting detail for them to note. Uh, cold killer found clutch in the victim's hand. It's weird that it has my fingerprints, but he's the one holding it. I want to know why. Now, oh, whatever. Covered in Shiro's fingerprints. Freck. I knew I should have worn clothes. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. 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 Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. I mean, it could have also just broke when it hit the ground, but who knows? Well, Mr. Shiro, do you have some kind of ex explanation for all this? Uh... I'm the one who broke the watch. What? This is really bad. Well, my buttocks. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Mr. Grossberg, that's actually kind of gross. Stop talking about that. What really happened? The truth is, I went because he called me. He was in the... from ecology department, so we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. Uh, AM or PM? Oh. You know, I don't really know. Maybe that's why it was so dark outside. Oh my gosh, you're such an idiot. We talked for a bit, and then around 3 AM or PM? Ugh, that's really annoying. Get used to it. We split up. Then later, when I went back, found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days. 
But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Shiro, that completely different test- I'm so angry! That's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. <laughs> sneeze. That's not how sneezing works. You can't just say sneeze and it goes away. I'm sorry, Santa. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. <clears throat> All I know is that that photograph didn't make me laugh and I'm pissed off. What? What? Miss mm. Faye, please begin your cross-examination while I go get a soda. Uh, okay, Santa. Ah. Door! Ah. Wow, he's really just gonna walk away like that? Ah, soda. Wow, well, just gonna waste a bunch of time, are we? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm thirsty. Ah, there we go. Yeah, nice cracking sound of opening up a cold one. Mm. So tasty. Oh, please, Mr. Shiro, don't tell any more lies. Called you? Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never. Three dots. But. But you did. That day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. It's kind of weird that you've never met the dude and yet he somehow has your phone number. That doesn't quite make much sense. That actually would sound really suspicious in my opinion. Like, if I was to date a girl, date a woman that uh, had a previous boyfriend and I didn't know about the previous boyfriend and I suddenly got a text from a random phone number saying, hey, beat me out here. I would absolutely be calling the cops before going there because that's not something that is normal. You don't just accept to go somewhere that someone asks you to do you know, just because they somehow got your phone number. How do you even get the phone number to begin with? What's messed up? In fact, actually, I would be questioning the girl at that point. Hmm. Something suspicious about her now. Anyways. And this Dolly person is... My, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my, my, um, sweetheart. That didn't sound very reassuring. You didn't sound very confident in saying that. Bruh. Bruh. What was that for, Mia? Oh. Um. Yeah, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. <laughs> nice. Dalia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Why do you have to say murder victim? Just say victim. It sounds stupid when you say murder victim. Before she met Mr. Shiro, that is. <clears throat> you really should just say victim. You shouldn't say murder victim. It's really stupid. Oh, okay, I see how it is. Just gonna gang up on the guy that has the green suit and the duck bill hair. Uh. Everyone gang up on the unique guy, because apparently he's too unique. Shut up! No one likes you. So it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45 a.m. or p.m.? Um... A.m.? Well, you'd be wrong. It's p.m. Yeah, and we were both there, right on time. <clears throat> right on time. That sounds suspicious. Usually one person is late. What? <clears throat> you said the victim was in the... Pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist! Oh, like... Edward and Alphonse Eric. With the, uh... The clapping and the, 
the transmutation circles. No, not that kind of alchemist. That's also trademark, copyrighted, not sponsored, wrong series, wrong franchise, Santa. I see. Gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. Ho ho! Ho! Really, Santa? You ho 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 in the court? Well, it's my car room. I can do whatever I want. Stupid. How fascinating. Sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details? About timing of the meeting? Well, let's see. Um... About the department? Forget about it. Well, the timing of the meeting... Could be suspicious, but I want to kind of ask more about the pharmacology department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. That's right. And they sure look dangerous. Yeah. Because it's pharmaceuticals. It has to do with medicine. Of course it's going to be dangerous. You have to work at it just right, otherwise you're going to hurt someone. You're going to cause more pain than, you know, actually healing any wounds. Stupid. They use non-standard voltages, so they are high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables? Hmm. Like the ones that are hanging from the poles that we found in the picture. Yeah. There were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. So, what was it you were talking about? You know, <laughs> maybe that maybe we should hang out again sometime. Really? I thought you didn't like the dude. Why all of a sudden you're talking about hanging out with him again? Hanging out again sometime? I wish that were true. So you say you went back? Uh, yeah. That's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right. I was. Three dots. Set the desk. Then why, Mr. Shiro? Why? Why did I have to set the desk? What? Why did you go back there? Three dots. Um, I thought maybe we could make up. I mean, he would probably look nice with a little bit of eyeshadow, as with me having some eyeliner. What? No, uh, never mind. Three dots. I'm going to take the music away now, because that was really weird what you just said. Uh... Uh, three dots? Uh, three dots. Three dots. That's it. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this whole eyeliner thing. Uh, what? It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in the spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right, Mia. I don't think there's any such thing as common in the phrase common sense. Anyways. So, did anyone else know that you were talk or taking that you were talking about cold medicine? What? That you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals. So I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly. Just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Mm. 
Her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> uh, that's supposed to be Lucky Charms, and that's trademark, copyrighted, not sponsored. Oh. Why did you punch me? <laughs> wow, really, Mia? Oh, I I'm so sorry. I just felt like hurting someone. <laughs> wow. Gallowing! Uh, no more slapping and punching in my courtroom. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. Which is weird. And would definitely make uh, the defendant suspicious. Because if he died at the moment that they met up, the only person that could have caused the death was the other person that's still alive. Hmm. Well, I guess that means Phoenix is guilty and we will never get to play the other two games. And then the defendant, why is the narrator talking nonsense? Why, that sounds so weird that I've said that before. Anyways, and then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. Yeah, Santa, you should probably take a swig of your soda. Your voice is getting kind of raspy. Mm. I guess you're right. Mm. Don't tell me what to do! I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle, either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Shiro. But I thought you were Santa. Why would you want to be frank? Not nah, shut up! That's a terrible dad joke! Okay. Your testimony cannot be trusted. W what do you mean? <laughs> I knew it wasn't too much work for a little girl. <laughs> I'll show you who's little and a girl. Uh, excuse me, what? However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Santa? Yes. Why is your suit green? Uh, how the murderer was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? What's an egg electrocuted? I have no idea. I don't believe the murder weapon had been produced yet, correct? Well, that is I. You are correct, Santa. So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? I could somehow establish how it was done. Maybe I could still come out of this mess smiling like a rose or smelling. I could also smile, too, yeah. even though roses don't smile. You know what, I probably shouldn't have said that phrase at all. Establish murder method? Mm, can't right now. Um... Not sure if I can. Uh, we'll try to establish it. Stop the desk. Santa. Uh, yes, Miss Faye. Why did you stop the desk so manly? I have no idea. I believe that we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now. We should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. Uh, are you smiling like a rose? What? Uh, that would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brass statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to sustain their argument with evidence. Huh. Of course I know that. Actually, I totally forgot about that. Uh, now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Um... Is it number one? Yeah, it's number one. As for the cause of death... I say this picture captures it quite well. Well, what? But there is nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? Right there. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... that's... what is that? A served, or severed, electrical cable. It's also served, because it serves no purpose now that it's been severed. What? I believe, Santa. 
You believe? I believe. I'll remember to get you at least one thing on your list. What? Never mind. Continue. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines the farmer uh, college students use in their experiments require high voltage. I don't know why we had to split experiment. You know, when normally we don't really do that. We didn't do it with the pharmacology word. What are you talking about? Never mind. Because of that, there are especially high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then, the high voltage cable. Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm, that certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? <laughs> well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The Defendant. Ah, three dots. Rubber, 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 murder cable. Hmm, that much is certainly true. Nah, excuse me, I had a burp. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Shiro was the murderer. You do? Well, what is it? His claws. What? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? Fingerprints. And his claws. Oh. What kind of animal is he? Never mind, Santa. You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. It's still not gonna make me laugh even on the third try. Whatever, Santa. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Does it? I mean... Yes. It, it really does. It does, Santa. Oh! Ah, uh, you mean... Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own paws. Wha- what His paws! I can only think of one way Mr. Shiro could have left a print like that. Intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. Order! 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 That's enough! I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. And with that, uh, we might have to go ahead and suspend the session. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Who are you talking to, Santa? Yeah, who are you talking to? Bruh! Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe. Take care. We'll see you in the next session. What? 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 You're all a bunch of idiots.